Philip Edmonds on board. India won up in the series then and they won with more than seven overs to spare. Well, Kapil Dev afterwards received the cheque for the winning captain, three and a half thousand pounds, and Bob Willis declared that his man of the match was Azaruddin. We can only hope from the England point of view that they managed to bat a lot better up at Old Trafford when the second of these Texaco matches is played on Monday. India first, and not surprisingly, making no change, which meant still no place for the trusty all-rounder Amarnath. England making one adjustment, they left out Les Taylor and they brought in their second spinner, Phil Edmonds, to complete a duo with John Embry. They might have been uh, glad of at the Oval when there was some turn in the pitch, but it seemed unlikely there might be much here today. Now, at the Oval on Saturday, Kapil Dev uh, won the toss and asked uh, England to bat first, but uh, today the roles were reversed. Kapil Dev called wrong and uh, India were put in to bat. On Saturday at the Oval, Srikanth fell first ball of the day, or of the innings, to Dilly. He didn't suffer a similar fate now. Let's see the fifth ball of the first over, Srikanth at the receiving end, and it's Dilly bowling. Oh, well bowled. Graham Dilly getting some movement. Just leaving quite sharply off the pitch there, actually. Srikanth's nowhere near the ball. But just a little too short to really be dangerous. So Gavaskar faces Richard Ellison, who this time has the new ball. Confident start by Gavaskar. Gavaskar plays this very strong off driver. Perhaps he felt he hadn't timed it, or maybe Fowler would have half stopped it. That's caught. Well caught by Graham Gooch at second slip. A very big prize for Richard Ellison. A reward for keeping the ball up to the bat. Second over with the new ball, and Gavaskar has gone. Port Gooch, Bold Ellison for four, and so an early breakthrough for England. Very neatly done, this beautifully pitched out swinger. It's just held up, and the onside stroke taking the outside edge, and so neatly picked up. And Dilly prepares the ball now to shrink out. Disappeared. Square on the offside. The flashing bat. I'm not convinced that Shrikant knew where it was going. They're great fun to watch these Indian bats when they do throw the bat. Very exciting players. And here's Shrikant. He's just hit it on the rise. Just stood there and given it a whack. Great fun to watch. Which brings Azaruddin to take strike for the first time this morning. Yes, the thing I like about it as a routine is that uh, he very often looks very narrow out there. And I always think that's a real measure of a good player because it means he's staying sideways. Derek Pringle at deep backward square. So Mohammed Azaruddin is off the mark. Ellison to Shrikant. In the air, just to the gap and four runs. You might say it's risky, but he really middled it. And it would have needed to have gone straight to Graham Fowler to have been a catch. If it hit a gap, it was four. This has gone like a rocket, a beautiful, pure swing of the bat there. Straight through, stood up to hit it. Cracking shot, right between Gatting and Dilly. Graham Dilly makes the ground from 
third man. Time for change. Yes, Derek Pringle. Great shot, too. Beautifully fielded. Yes, he hit the ball on the up again. Beautifully timed. It went very quick indeed. But David Gower moving to his wrong side, his left hand side, and a brilliant stop. shot indeed again on the up not a full half volley and the ball really speedy through the cover boundary this is the point we made it on when he had a long off on for Derek Pringle and no man back there uh, really he's got a ball very very straight indeed we're only into the 13th over it's a measure of uh, how well the Indian batsmen have been playing both at the oval and here that Gooch has been taken from slip and put out at deep cover just a few yards in from the boundary so Phil Edmonds coming on at the far end now Gower had four runs written all over it and the England captain took off grabbed it one hand and has achieved the breakthrough as we did the man out Hamadars within, caught by Gower off Edmonds, and the bowling change has worked. Alison <laughs> Fielder. Six overs, one with the 25 for Richard Edison and the 50 up now for India in 104. And here's it next. This was a bit of a desperation shot, and this has been caused by Phil Edmonds bowling very well. And it was just really a crossback slog, and Derek Prindle diving full length through his left hand almost brought up a brilliant catch. That's safely away. Very cool set out there, and kicking the outside edge is just as good as a smash down the ground. Four more to Strakhan. A very risky shot, and I think he was probably playing it away on the offside. Probably not quite as fine as that. There's 50 to Chris the Camp. Very fine innings, 50 out of 67. Difficult to dominate things much more than that. Just faced 66 balls and hit five boundaries, and it's his 12th score of 50 or more in limited overs internationals. It's Edmonds to Ben Sarkin. A little change of line shot there. Timing was superb. Actually beaten in the flight, I think, by Edmonds. Just stroked it away between backward point and cover. a gap and enough timing on that superb cover drive skims away before and that was uh, Edmund's quicker ball which is usually quick enough to hurry the batsman and make him mistime it but uh, Ving Sarka really cottoned that one Oh, well stopped. It's 
not easy for Derek Pringle to get down and dive quite quickly. The ball goes fine. And a change in the bowling. John Embry comes on to make it an all spin attack. Well, he decided beforehand. Has it got the carry? It didn't carry, but neither did Pringle make the ground, and uh, certainly no catch. But they got just one run, a course for the 100 coming up. Oh, Shrikant's absolutely burning now for the runs. He's twiddling his bat. He wants to get after everything. Edmonds to Shrikant. Oh, marvellous shot. Uh, the most brilliant stop by Graham Fowler. Quite brilliant, the whole sequence of cricket there. Shrikant giving himself room to play a slashing cover drive. And Graham Fowler sprinting, diving. in the air and caught Graham Fowler it's a long hit out there Shrikant my friend and Graham Fowler knows this territory pretty well deep deep mid wicket at Old Trafford but what great delight he's given everybody is crammed into this ground today pure Shrikant caught Fowler Bold Emery 67 and 94 balls and five spectacular fours. There you can see it's a very straight delivery about middle stump and he picks it up pretty well. But Graham Fowler not having to go too far. Plenty of time to get himself stationary and waiting for the ball to come. Sandy Patil. One of the natural strikers of the ball. That's well struck. He waited for that one. Embury. Ooh, close. Very close. Good throw by John Embury. And you see the throw again. Beautiful and flat. Straight into Dalton's chest. The batsman just getting the benefit of the doubt. Embury to Vinksaka. Oh, bowled him. Might well have bowled himself. Philip Vinksaka trying to put John Embury off by moving before the ball was released. Got himself into a terrible knot there. It really is amazing how batsmen get themselves out sometimes. Bowled by Embury for 29. Ellison to Sandy Potter. That's well struck. Picked up, up very quickly indeed. Spotted the weakness in length. Very short. Yeah, it's a very good shot. It was very short, but the batsman was very quick onto it and whipping it away through mid-wicket and giving the fielders no chance at all. See, there he, he actually played it really with his balance still on the front foot. And that shows how easy pace the wicket is. The bowler for England in this first over after lunch is going to be Graham Dilley. He's got a biggest so far, five overs, two maidens, no wicket for 13. First ball after lunch. And what a good start for Graham Dilley, but not such a good beginning for India with Sandeep Patil dismissed. And now it's 130 for five, and that puts an entirely new complexion on this match. Well, Graham Dilley seems to be a specialist in the first baller. He got a first baller at 
the oval and now the first ball after lunch at Old Trafford he produces a lovely length ball I don't think it did a lot but it was just in the right place for Mr Patil and Dilly now to Ravi Shastri Field it again. This was such a slick piece of fielding, I don't think... Batsman didn't even know he'd got it. And Derek Pringle's being brought back into the attack by David Gower. He's going to ball to couple down. been brilliant in the field today. Maybe 50 up for India. One stage, We're looking at uh, something like 250, around about the halfway mark. So fewer than that now, although you can never tell with someone like Kapil Dev. So Embury to Shastri. Safely over cover and bouncing out towards the boundary. The ground has quickened up a little bit. The overnight showers to slow it down in the first session. But uh, it's dried out nicely now. And Shastri has taken advantage of that. And Pringle to come in from the Warwick Road end. Not a tremendous belt. Way over mid -wicket. At the moment, Kapil Dev has decided that the bowlers have to go. And a beautiful control stroke there. No real slogging, just nice and easy, straight through the ball. And one bounce down there for four. And some stumping. Difficult for Downton. It was the Yorker that got through underneath the bat, I suspect. Yeah, very full length there, but uh, really you feel that Paul Downton ought to have taken that. He had a reasonable amount of time, was well down the wicket, but that's a bad miss from England's point of view. Another fine shot by Cappledale. Ten off the over and two balls to go. Well, not a very good delivery from John Embry here. He got too far down the leg side. In actual fact, he may have even get wider with Kaplan and hit that, but uh, he hit that where he intended, and that's four more runs. Oh, that's four more. Or a chase for Edmonds. Not quite off the middle of the bat. Aimed it square, went finer. But they've run four. <laughs> 200 up. Five wickets down. And the 200 coming off 297 balls. Richard Ellison returns. Full toss. Oh, more brilliant fielding. There can be no criticism of England in the field today. And that's Alan Mann. Middle that. 
and beautifully placed. The gap between deep mid wicket and long on. A punishing over for Mitch Dillison. But now it's Graham Dilly. There are five fielders on the offside. Four on the leg. Dilly expected to bowl straight. Again to the leg side. And that got there quickly. Ellison had hardly moved at the deep back of square leg boundary. Yeah, it was a bad delivery again, uh, about a foot high, a full toss, just going down the leg side. And Pringle and Gower trying to cope with the problem of Kapil Dev and Ravi Shastri retreating outside a leg stump and hitting it through the offside. Kevin Dev's 50, and a fine half century it has been. Full of typical capital improvisations, but not at all risky. He played very steadily at first, and means much appreciated. 50 of 43 balls. Eight off the over and a 100 partnership between Kapil Dev and Ravi Shastri. So Dilly to Shastri. <laughs> 50 for Ravi Shastri. So what pleasure it's given the Indian supporters to see both the captain, Kapil Dev, and now their vice-captain, Ravi Shastri, scoring a half-century. Shastri is 50, coming off 64 balls, and he's hit three fours. Well, Dilly wants that. Quite a strong appeal from Graham Dilly. Oh, a show of disbelief. And he's good night. That means that umpire Constant had to consult the square leg umpire, Dickie Bird, to see if the ball, in fact, carried to Paul Duncan. And that was the only doubt in Constant's mind. Did it carry? He looked at Di Dickie Bird to confirm that it had, so Kapil Dev, Paul Duncan, bowled Dilly. Or 51. Dilly to Chetan Sharma. Two balls left in this over. Oh, he doesn't need a sighter. A dynamic start by Chetan Sharma. Dilly to Shastri. The final over begins of the Indian innings. Neatly played. Finely played. That was a high class shot from Ravi Shastri. Walk to the off, nudge to the left. 90 runs came off the last 10 overs in a beautifully paced partnership. Brilliant innings by Srikanth. My word, he's good value to watch. Pretty good score, that. And on to the England bowling, where we see that it's much of a muchness. Two for Dilly and two for Embury. And I think it's fair to say that all of them, from one time or another, had some trouble with their direction today on this very good pitch. Now then, the task for England, 255 at 4.64. If they want to win the... Uh, 
Texaco Trophy. If they win here, of course, it makes it one all. They've got to score 255 in 47 overs at something like five and a half and over. Let's look then at the England reply. It's a six over. They've made 11 for no wicket, and it's Spinney bowling to the left-handed Fowler. No ball call. They smashed away through the covers anyway. Well, that will give Graham Fowler a little bit of confidence. Graham Gooch is to take strike. Well bowled. Beautifully bowled. Uh, Gooch uh, is certainly not convinced he was out. Xander came panned at the keeper and Kapil Dev were up for the catch. England's first wicket is down with just 18 on the board. This is the seventh over. Gooch made 10 and 17 balls. Wicket keeper is Chandra Campanda. Well, all that commotion has brought David Gower out to bat at number three. Facing a king pair in the series. And he's off it very quickly. Sky, flecks of cloud everywhere, but nice and warm now. And here's Roger Binney. Good heavens, she's done it again. Caught one at the Oval the other day, an absolute blinder from the court and bowl. He's plucked that out of thin air. Graham Fowler's gone. Out for ten. Court and bowl by Binney. Well, a little bit of luck here, Graham Fowler. Hit that pretty hard. And really, he didn't catch that. I hit his hand and just stuck in there, but it was as mid as anybody was there. But uh, just the ball just running for the Indians a little bit in this two matches. You can see there the surprise in his face is, oh, suddenly, oh, it's there in my hand. <laughs> Very good average in one day international matches. Over 42 runs per innings. And he's off the mark. Splendid. Splitting of those two fielders down on the deep backward square boundary. Yes, Roger Binney won't be impressed with that delivery. Chetan Sharma to Lamb. Good run. Oh, Lamb knew he'd miss hit the ball. 50 up in 90 balls. Been satisfied with their rate. Both these batsmen are finding a little bit of room to play their shots. Confident appeal. Big appeal. And the bat was certainly outside of the line of the pads. A second spinner comes. Maninda Singh. 
useful nudge. And it's got there. A very productive over and a very, very useful one for England. With the two interval coming up, they could have been just bogged down for a minute and the introduction of Meninder Singh, he's just bowled one or two just off line. Gower had taken five off the over and now this very delicate leg glance for four. It's nine off the over. so well at the Oval on Saturday will be under a lot of pressure out there 49 to go he's played very well after playing himself in and uh, his England team need 152 to win in 28 overs <laughs> 50 to David Gower very good innings, nice comeback. First ball at the Oval and now a half century in this chase for runs to square the matches in the Texaco Trophy. The bowler from the Stratford end, Mohammed Azruddin. and placed to perfection. It's in the air, but it's safe. Don't think Gavaskar picked that up or led quickly. It looked as though it was a leading edge and he was looking away to square leg see where the ball was going in fact it was going up above his head and down past the bowler it's the hundred stand between Gower and Lamb Chakra Sharma has been brought back on taking place of uh, Ravi Shastri nine overs for 31 Shastri beautiful shot Great placement once again from Gower. 115 more needed to win, 22 overs. And that rate has gone down now to 5.23. It's not by much. Oh, you wouldn't read it well. You will read about it, actually. What a way to have the partnership broken. That's rank bad luck glorious stroke just the touch and the partnership is broken yes yeah, you're just thinking that England are going nicely along and that so you can never predict in this game Gao hit the ball back pretty hard the ball was just stuck a foot out hoping to get a stop to it you see that under his soul onto the end and quite easily out he hadn't begun to put his back down when the ball hit the wicket is to be a fresh spell for Roger Binney. Mike Gaddings, the new batsman, is the non-striker. Well, that was in the air, and uh, one almost expects Roger Binney to pull off the amazing Corbin Bowl. Instead, it's 150 up for England. Going for the big hit. Picked his spot. There's a very fine effort by Shastri, but a, also a good effort by Gar. Picked his spot wide of mid on. Not quite middle it. Final 
good shot and Roger Binney giving that one a little bit further up the pitch. It just seemed to me that David Gar had decided where it had to go. Not quite where it was picking. But a valiant effort. The one before, he, it was a short ball and it came off, but uh, that one was perhaps over extravagant. Only 14 overs to go, the run rate increasing all the time. I suspect that, in fact, Derek Pringle should be the one to have a go. That's a fine shot. Four runs to extra cover. And that's more like the batting that England need. <laughs> Orthodox third man, and Dave got in the room, and got in applied the proper shots. Yes, I think Kepeldev did this at the Oval. He brought his fine leg up, and as soon as he does that, he's got to make sure he pitches it off stump and outside. <laughs> Very good fielding. That mid wicket by Srikant. Good straight hit. Four runs. Uh, Derek Pringle couldn't have chosen a better moment to play the classical straight lofted drive. Yeah, I sent him up and hit it beautifully straight. The knee to Pringle. Oh, he's middle that too. You could hear the crack of the bat. Wow, well, what a marvelous sprint that was by Azaruddin. To keep them down to three runs, it was very well hit indeed, but Azaruddin positively sprinted along in front of that pavilion. In. Easy two to Gatti. Good shot here by Mike Gatti. Kept his head down, really watched the ball, pulled it through mid wicket. On a quick outfield, that would probably be four. Ball, the ball again. Oh, that's out. Fine keeping. Beautifully bowled by Kappeldale. Let your play bowl so well. And getting for that brief moment. Lost his way. Lost his judgment. The sort of thing that happens in these late stages of a one-day contest. And suddenly, India happy and England are upset. Exit my getting. They put on a hundred. <laughs> Mike Gatting went out to 39. 53 balls.
Well, this wicketkeeper doesn't mix the wickets too often. Fine delivery there by Keppel Dev, right in the block hole. Mike Gatley said off up and he'd just made contact. He hadn't. And, of course, this wicketkeeper's dead on again. Really miles out. Three or four yards. But a very fine ease indeed from Mike Gatting. He's played beautifully there. Very positive cricket. And put England in a good position to win this match now. And England have decided to send in the more orthodox of their remaining batsman, Paul Downton. Believing that common sense now should just see England through. But common sense often vanishes in limited over games. The sanest men have been seen to go quite berserk. While Paul Downton maybe cometh the hour. Neatly played. Kepler Dev won't be very happy at bowling that delivery there because a new batsman coming in, it's got to be a good length off stump and make him hit against the pace of the ball coming through. But uh, leg and middle, half volley, that's the one place you're going to get the ball away. Oops, stay there. <laughs> it's desperate when you're calling for the non striking batsman. Yes, not quite an run there because the fielders are definitely in close now for the new batsman. And Keppel Dev himself got through very quickly. And Downton's going for the touchline, but uh, decides against it. <laughs> 11 off 13. Keppel Dev to Downton. They've gone for the second. Well run, Paul Downton. Now, Capel needs those four men inside the circle. So, fine legs been brought up. <laughs> All right, call by umpire Diggy Bird. <laughs> Useful. That's another long run for Azadarin. Three runs. Five runs to win. Ten balls in which to get them. The fine leg is back. Let's get the nudge from Downton. And not the slog. It must be wide, and so it is. Yes, and I think the bowler knew as soon as he let that go, and quite rightly, that's well down the leg side. He didn't even look at the umpire, he knew it was coming. <laughs> leg prize will do. Yes, there it is. Full-blooded shot from Derek Pringle. A fine innings by him. He leaves the field 49 not out. Paul Downton, four not out. Moment of great joy for England. 
the second Texaco match won by England. So it's one all in this mini series. What a splendid contest. Exciting climax, interest sustained throughout. Splendid job there by Catting, Prinkle and Downton, cool at the climax. And incidentally, Gooch there at the top, as Raymond Dillingworth uh, suspected earlier on, LBW not caught behind. The Indian bowling, all a bit expensive today, the most economical. Uh, the captain, Kapil Dev, and Shastri, Meninda going for 55 in 11 overs and two wickets for Binny. So the result, England beating India by five wickets, squaring the series, but India taking the Texaco trophy because their scoring rate overall in the two games was the faster. And when it was all over, Frank Hayes, formerly of Lancashire and England, nominated David Gar as the man of the match. The man of the series on the Indian side was Shastri, and on the England side, Gar again. In the last round, and the match was...